And we're back. <sighs> hexagonal, hexagonal. So, no, let's do a bright color so we can see it. Hexagonal, no, octagonal, sorry, not hexagonal. Jesus Christ. Uh, expander rings. So, expander rings. You may, in the past, um, or even currently, have bought a two-stroke, usually two-stroke, uh, piston kit. And in that kit, you will get a, a, you know, a tall skirted piston like this, with a ring groove in it, usually two, most of the time. This really only applies to um, twin-ringed two-strokes. You'll get a wrist pin, you'll get some clips, or whatever, in this kit. And in the little box that you get with your piston ring, you'll get this octagonal, <laughs> this eight-sided ring with a gap in it somewhere. I can't be bothered to draw that. And I've seen posts over the years now of people holding up this ring or, you know, taking a picture of it and saying, what is this? What is it for? Well, it's an expander ring, my good man. Um, or lady, who knows. What this does is this. Let's just do, you've got your ring groove, your ring land, which is what this thing is, and then you've got another ring groove and then you have the rest of your piston right so this is your crown of your piston these are grooves for obvious reasons and these bits here are called lands and what you do is you fit a that's a really bad color that's probably not going to show up no it's not going to show up too well let's go for orange let's go for orange you'll have oh yes you'll have a com the top compression ring right and then you'll have a second ring and that expander ring is meant to fit in here but why why not up at the top the reason why these things existed and they are old school things because material science studies and everything has happened so what we have is if we have our cylinder wall so this is our cylinder wall here we have a clearance this is a clearance, not a tolerance, right? This is a clearance, not a tolerance. If you look in your service manual and it says 0 0.06 to 0 0.08 millimeters, that range is a tolerance, right? That's what the engine can accept. And, we, you know, replace that word with service limit and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's an operational envelope. It's a tolerance, right? It's what the engine can tolerate, the gap of that part, or even the size of that part. You see, it doesn't have to be a gap. It can be a size. It can be a, an amount of wear. It's what the design can tolerate to work within operational range. That is a tolerance. Now, you might go, but that's a clearance. It's like, no, 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 no. The tolerance is the range. Right, so the range is the tolerance. The clearance is what the actual gap is. So the clearance between two parts, phantom kettle. Stop it, right? Clearance is a dimension. A tolerance is a range of usually dimensions. Any road, what has this got to do with anything? This, uh, with all designs, because the alloys weren't as good, but not only that is because the studies haven't been carried out to the nth degree. They used to live, li leave big clearances between piston and side skirt. This was to stop up nipping, etc, etc. And a lot of these cylinders used to be just cast iron cylinders. Aluminium piston, cast iron cylinders. Nowadays, we've got stuff like Nicosil, Diacil, all these kind of jubbly bubblies that um, are much more thermally stable, right? So we can basically have a tighter clearance. Why do we want a tighter clearance? Blow by, right? We don't want it passing the rings. They are seals at the end of the day. So what used to happen, especially on cold start, was that this clearance is the greatest. Right. So this clearance is the greatest when called, right? And you used to start these engines up in here, clatter, 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 clatter on startup. It used to be not appealing for customers. Number two is if you can hear something, things are actually striking things. You know, just think of it in simple terms like a hammer. Little taps and then big taps. What can you hear from further away? Well, the louder the noise, the more energy. It's as simple as that. So what they used to do is have these expanding octagonal rings. And the reason why they're octagonal is because that's the cheapest amount of material to get around a circle. But number two is where your circle is, that octagonal ring sticks up like this. So they weren't going to make a circle because that would be pointless. If you have this octagonal ring, these edges poke and hit the back of the second ring. In other words, it, it's an expander ring. It pushes the, it puts like a preload on the secondary ring. Why would you need that? The exhaust gases are greatest for the first ring. They sneak back, back past the ring and push against the cylinder wall, those gases have diminished quite a lot by the time they get to this ring and don't push hard enough, all right? At cold starts. 
right? So your engine goes clatter, 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 clatter. You get a bit more wear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if they just have this very, very cheap, flimsy ring that just goes in the back, it acts as a seal. This is basically very similar to uh, apex seals and side seals that you have in a, a wankel, right? These seals are they are actually the springs for the steel. Uh, the seals, the springs for the seals. But this, you know, the tension in the ring already springs out and pushes against the cylinder walls. It's just not enough. Not only that is, if you have too much springiness, the pit, the ring can be offset, so it can be pushed either side as it goes smash, smash, smash. If you have this expander ring in there, it expands the whole ring, and it's just a preload, basically. It, a spander ring, you could call it a preload spring, but if you call it a preload spring, I don't think anyone would know what it is. Weirdly enough, though, most people don't know what they are. So that's what that is. That's what an expander ring is. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.